If you've ever had to switch to using your non-dominant hand for tasks like writing or brushing your teeth due to an injury, you'll have a sense of the challenge MV Augusta faced when launching the Turismo Veloce in 2015. The company, which transitioned from building airplanes in the early 1900s to motorcycles in 1945, has a strong legacy in creating performance-first motorcycles primarily designed for the racetrack. Despite the sport in the Turismo Veloce's sport touring label, this bike is not a pure sport bike. It needs to excel in multiple aspects of motorcycling, not just speed. The first-generation Turismo Veloce reflected the initial awkwardness of branching into new territory. However, the 2021 model year brought subtle improvements that enhanced comfort and versatility without sacrificing the essence of what makes an MV. With the ongoing evolution of the sport touring category, thanks to bikes like the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT Plus and Suzuki GSX S1000 GX Plus, we decided it was time to re-evaluate whether the Turismo Veloce still feels like MV Augusta adapting to new challenges. Can it hold its own against newer competitors? A closer look at the bike. The Turismo Veloce embodies the essence of a good sport touring machine, akin to an Olympic athlete showing up to a casual game in relaxed attire. Beneath the fairings lies chiseled, purposeful muscle, but the bike's comfortable stance and rider-focused features indicate a day that's not solely about intense performance. However, this is still an MV Augusta, and straying too far from performance, style, and raw aggression would be unthinkable for the engineers. The 2021 model year brought a few straightforward yet impactful updates to the Turismo Veloce. The seat height was lowered from 33.5 inches to 32.7 inches, a taller windscreen was added, and the seat foam was thickened to enhance long-distance comfort. The electronics were fully modernized, and the engine was updated to meet Euro 5 emission standards with a focus on reducing frictional losses. Additional engine modifications included a new exhaust and a higher pressure injection system, which slightly adjusted the power and torque curves. When tested on Cycle World's Dynojet 250i dynamometer, the Turismo Veloce generated 98.3 horsepower at 11,010 RPM and 55.3 pound FT of torque at 8,530 RPM. It's important to note that this fast tourer is specifically the Turismo Veloce Lusso SCS, $25,598, available alongside the more exotic-looking RC SCS, $27,998. Both models feature MV's smart clutch system, a centrifugal automatic clutch prominently showcased behind the Turismo Veloce's transparent clutch cover, like a trophy on display. This is MV's way of saying, yes, we're proud of this. While automatic and semi-automatic transmissions have become more popular over the years, see Honda's E-Clutch, Yamaha's YMT system, and BMW's ASA transmission, MV has been refining its smart clutch system in collaboration with US-based Reckless for years. This technology allows the Turismo Veloce to be ridden either in a fully manual mode with the clutch lever or as an automatic, requiring only the use of the electronically assisted, bidirectional quickshifter while leaving, or coming to a stop without touching the clutch lever. Clutch action is managed via MV Augusta's engine control management system, which uses algorithms to control the system's expander disk. Those algorithms reference lookup tables that have been developed gear by gear, RPM by RPM, and by varying throttle position, not to mention how fast the throttle is opened or closed. In short, the system is quite advanced, at least from an electronic standpoint. Mechanically, SCS is not as complex as it sounds. The only truly unique piece is Reckless EXP Disc, a thick, centrifugally activated friction disc that houses weighted wedges and engagement springs. As throttle is applied and revs pick up, those wedges are flung along ramps, overcoming the engagement springs and engaging the clutch's main plates. Somewhat importantly, Recluse has since moved to a system with rolling contacts versus wedges for better durability, smoother power delivery, and a more natural clutch feel. The rest of the Luso SCS is a mix of high-end hardware and proven components borrowed from other MV models. This contributes to the bike's sporty personality while also hinting at the company's smaller size and need for intense resourcefulness. It's easy to look and feel like a sport bike when the bulk of your hardware comes from a sport bike. Think MV's potent Brutale Naked Bike. 
generously sized 34 liter side bags, and the aforementioned windscreen bring the sport slash touring balance back to a comfortable middle ground. Plus, you have semi active SAC suspension front and rear, with a generous 6.3 inches of travel up front and 6.5 inches out back. Additional electronics include lean angle sensitive traction control, 8 levels plus off, cornering ABS, heated grips, 3 levels plus off and four ride modes, including a custom mode with adjustments for gas sensitivity, low, normal, high, max torque engine, full power, low power, engine brake, normal, low, and engine response, fast response, slow response. Suspension is adjustable between medium, soft, and hard, with base settings for a single rider, one, rider with luggage, two, two riders, three, and two riders with luggage, four. Other niceties include cruise control, a small storage cubby near the handlebar, and dual USB ports just below the 5.5-inch TFT display, which has Bluetooth connectivity for smartphone connections. Ergonomics and comfort. We talk more about the cutesy storage compartment and other little features, but honestly, the compartment is too small to be practical and is covered by a flimsy plastic door that doesn't match the bike's price tag. This along with clunky saddlebag latches and a loose saddlebag key cylinder were unfortunate finds over the course of our time with the bike. The rest of Turismo Veloce Luso SCS is as premium as the luxury name suggests. The exposed steel trellis frame, slash cut mufflers, and single-sided swing arm are visible reminders that this is an exotic Italian machine. They also help the Turismo Veloce stand out from less exotic competition. MV is well-versed in designing bikes that grab your attention, and that's very much the case here. In addition to having a more aggressive look than bikes like the Angular, but still very Japanese GSX, S1000GX+, the Turismo Veloce has a relatively sporty rider triangle highlighted by moderately high and rearward footpegs. That, in conjunction with a tall handlebar, make it a dedicated but comfortable mount for longer days in the saddle. The one-hand adjustable screen does an excellent job of managing turbulent air, even if it almost makes you claustrophobic with how far it extends toward the rider. This is better described as an oddity than a nuisance, and overall wind protection is great given the bike's compact dimensions, with limited helmet buffet at highway speeds. The next bit will probably matter much less, but we found it hilarious that the aggressively shaped tail section flows air directly toward your butt so much so that you can feel the cold air on your backside. Personal air conditioning, anyone? Engine performance. The benefits of a mid to large displacement inline triple have been covered ad nauseum in the motorcycling space, but it's worth saying once again, there's almost no better engine platform for a bike that'll be tasked with everything from commuting to highway miles to backroad carving. Not only does this triple, with its raspy intake noise, sound absolutely brilliant as you whack the throttle, but it offers that near-perfect balance of low-end grunt and top-end performance, with a beautifully flat torque curve, 